Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It has been a minute. My name is Tess. I'm a licensed esthetician and acne specialist and I have a client in 30 minutes and I wanted to show you my everyday acne safe makeup. So if that interests you, keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more and enjoy. So this is a pretty simple routine but I have to say I've really been enjoying doing my makeup and like feeling a little bit more glam, a little bit more put together. It's just been kind of fun lately. So it's really not anything over the top. So to get started, I like to do a little bit of extra skincare before I put on makeup. Reason being, makeup just sits so much better when you have good skincare and good hydration. So I like to get the skin nice and hydrated and a little bit tacky. So I like to prep my skin first with the Glymed CBD B3 Facial Mist. Favorite product of all time from Glymed. This is really a rare product that tackles almost every skin concern. If you're oily, it aids in balancing oil. If you're dry, it provides a ton of hydration. It's a really powerful anti-inflammatory and I love it for a brightening effect. It's amazing in the summer just to cool yourself down and calm down any redness. It's actually been a really key factor in helping to manage my rosacea. I'll just give myself a spritz kind of at the end of the bottle, but this is a product I always have a backup for. Next, I'm just gonna lay down a little bit of moisturizer because again, we want a nice hydrated base and this can also act like a primer. So you don't necessarily need a primer. A lot of them actually can be quite clogging because the goal of a lot of primers is to fill in your pores and at what cost do we want to do that? So I like to use moisturizer. This is my favorite moisturizer. This is also from Glymed. It is the Age Delay Cream. It's phenomenal, very soothing for sensitive skin and it's like a nice mid-weight moisturizer, safe for acne prone skin as well. And it leaves you with a glow but not feeling greasy. And I'm just patting this in with a little disposable sponge. This is something I recommend if you are acne prone because although it's amazing that you can reuse a beauty blender over and over again, it's just not a good idea if you are an acne prone person. So I'll use these probably once or twice a week. Otherwise, I'll reach for brushes and I have a strong opinion that we should be cleaning our makeup brushes after each use because they do accumulate dead skin cells, bacteria, oil, dirt, and of course residue and makeup from our makeup products each time we're touching the makeup and then touching it to our face. So for an acne prone person, that is one thing if you like to do your makeup, you really want to start developing good habits around. And if you're not confident you can clean your makeup brush as well, um, this is a really nice substitute. So next, I'm just going to go in with my SPF. SPF is the best foundation always because you're getting a little bit of coverage, you're getting a light filter on the skin, but at the same time, you're really protecting your skin and this is the most important step in any skincare routine. If you're not wearing SPF every day, what are you doing? I was just talking about this with my hairstylist. I got my hair done yesterday, a little bit blonder, and she was saying how her daughter is 14 and she's really into skincare now, and she's so diligent with her SPF. And I was just thinking, man, I wish that was me because at 14, I definitely didn't have awareness about skincare. I was not wearing SPF except to soccer games, beach trips, stuff like that. And now kids these days have access to all of this education, all these professionals online, and they know, they know they gotta wear their sunscreen. So I think that's so cool, but I am a little bit jealous I didn't start earlier. Would have spent a lot less on Botox. For my SPF today, I am using the Even Up by Color Science. I really love this one, especially for people who are concerned with pigmentation. Color Science makes two SPFs. They make 
Oh, they make a lot of SPFs, but they make two SPFs that are almost more like targeted treatments. They have All Calm and then they have Even Up. Even Up is more geared toward brown tones and the All Calm is more geared toward redness. So if you struggle with post-inflammatory erythema or any red marks from acne trauma, All Calm is a great one. It is a little bit more of like a green tint and this one I do prefer a little bit. I find it's a little bit more wearable and the texture is just amazing. It's almost like, probably can't see it, but it's almost like a little mousse, like a whipped mousse and it's really, really fun to wear. Wears beautifully, my clients love this one. And so Even Up is great for brown tones, whether it is sunspots, age spots, melasma, Even Up is a really good investment to use, especially in the summertime. And I'm gonna make sure I get my ears, not only so I don't look crazy and it kind of blends in but also so I can protect my ears a little bit because we don't think about the ears very much and even I could do a lot better with this but especially because I tuck my hair behind the ears they are accumulating a lot of damage over the years with incidental sun exposure so Make sure you get your ears and then for the neck a little tip I have is to actually use your clear SPF first. So every morning I actually use SPF as my body lotion and La Roche Posay sent this to me, it was super nice of them, but I will just apply this from neck to chest, I'll do my arms. My arms actually get a ton of pigment and it's something you don't think about, but it's just a good habit to get into because when you're wearing a shirt, the neckline can move. And I like to go on multiple walks per day outside my dog. So I just like to do that step and then reapply as needed on the neck. But I'll do that first thing in the morning to kind of have a base coat. And then when I'm doing my makeup, I will reapply and make sure I get the neck so my face matches my neck. But definitely don't forget the neck. It is an area that can age pretty rapidly and because of us looking down at our cell phones and just looking down in general, it can degrade the neck. And we wanna protect that collagen. And the best way to do that is to make sure you're applying your SPF as well as your vitamin C, bring your serums down to the neck down to the chest, and you might be able to tolerate retinol a couple of nights on the neck. Some people can't tolerate it much, so you could even mix it with your moisturizer or just apply it a couple of nights instead of every night. My lips are getting a little dry, so I'm just gonna apply a little gloss. Now, this is also by Color Science. This product, I usually have eight of these just scattered all over my house. This is a peptide lip treatment with SPF 35 from Color Science. They have such a gorgeous range of, of colors. These are the ones I wear the most. The rose and the pink. The pink is really fun. It's a little bit bright. I kind of prefer the rose just for day to day, but also to protect the lips should be a big priority and something you can get started doing if you're watching this, if you're in your 20s, 30s, older than that, start protecting your lips. And I know fillers and Botox are really popular. I myself get a little bit of lip filler, Restyl and Kiss in my lips. And that's great, and that's one thing, but you also want to protect that collagen you do have with SPF and make sure you're treating the lips themselves too. I love my Color Science products. That is basically my makeup that I wear every single day. This is one of my favorite products. I really love the whole Color Science range, but I could not be without this. This is like a total desert island must-have for me. So this is the Total Eye 3-in-1. Also an SPF 35. I actually love the shade medium. A lot of people like the fair, and I'm obviously very fair, but I prefer it to be more of a true match 
but if you want it brighter, brighter, you could always go one shade lighter than your true skin tone, and that'll give you a really pretty brightness under the eye. It feels so good because of the cooling applicator. And this is just another way to really ensure you are treating that eye area. That's another sneaky area of the face that does age quite rapidly as well. And with this product, you don't need a lot, but you can always blend it out. And I find when I use the medium shade, I can even blend it onto the cheekbone for a little bit of highlight. I love using Color Science SPFs together because they're not competing with each other and they all blend nicely so you don't get any weird pilling. So next I'm gonna do bronzer. I forgot I've really been loving the Mary Phillips technique where she does the bronzer and blush first. Oh well it's okay I'll do it next time. But these are the two bronzers I really love also from Color Science. Their bronzing primer is absolutely amazing. It's so silky and gorgeous and it's SPF 20. And then we have the sticks, which are also my fave. If you haven't tried these, start with the bronze. It is really fun. Instead of applying products directly to my face, I will apply them to a clean sponge and a lot of products these days I've noticed just being the clean freak I am and after going through esthetician school where you can't double dip you can't touch your face go back in the product and touch your face again state board would not have it you kind of become <laughs> a little bit obsessed with that stuff because it gets drilled into you but I've noticed a lot of products come with these sponge applicators and there's no way to clean the sponge so you're applying it to your face every single day and using it for a matter of months to me, that's a little scary, not only for acne, but for other kinds of infections. And I see a lot of clients getting styes and things like that. I'm going to use another clean section of this sponge. It's really nice because you can get quite a good angle with it. And this blush, or this bronzer stick, is almost like a built-in blush as well. It's kind of a perfect tone that just gives you a little bit of color little bit of bronze and it's really fun to play with and something else I love about these sticks is you're really able to protect and treat those high points of the face that get a lot of sun damage so you're just really ensuring you get some extra good protection especially on the forehead I notice for myself this is where I can get a lot of pigment so you want to make sure you're blending up into the hairline and that will help your makeup look better too. Quick swipe down the nose, contour and snatch the jaw. And honestly, I kind of like how that looks alone, but I've also been really into blush lately. So Color Science also makes lots of blush version versions of this stick. I kind of think that looks good as is, but I want to add just a little hint of pink and blush. So this is the shade Blush by Color Science. They make such a fun range of shades. And for this step, I actually like to take a clean brush and that's where I can start blending things out a little bit more now that they are applied. So I just take my brush and this stick and this is really the way you want to apply it versus just going straight in. I find not only is it more sanitary and better for my acne prone peeps, it's also going to look more diffused and natural. So definitely want to try the blush tip and then I like to smile. Just pop it on the apple of my cheeks. And then what's great about this brush, which this is a Sigma Flat Flat Kabuki F80. Honestly, love this 
this brush. I think it's really popular. I like to bring it up pretty high, like almost up to my eye, and just kind of stamp it in down the nose, and then I'll just start to blend everything else out. I know this looks pretty bright, but it does tend to fade a little bit throughout the day. But what's great about these sticks is you can always reapply. Super easy to reapply. You're touching up your makeup and reapplying your SPF at the same time. I am excited about this because I have never been a powder girl, but I am now. I have never worn powder because I'm more of a dry skin type and I find powder is just so tricky with dry skin. It can really age you, make the skin drier, and Add a lot of creasing underneath the eyes so I've just always avoided it but TikTok has really gotten to me I've seen all these hot girls baking Alex Earl does it so I've been wanting to get on the baking trend and really use it to set my total eye as well so blue mercury and Jane Iredale actually sent me this powder so thank you so so much I'm obsessed and they have this little quiz online which I feel like normally those things <laughs> don't work for me and it's hard to find the shade match but this is like truly the perfect shade match and it's a really good mirror too this powder I don't know what it's called but I will link it below I like to take a fluffy brush I love Ilya's brushes and I'm just gonna dip it in and I am gonna be quite conservative with this but I'm gonna put it here on my chin just where a little bit of oil can come up I'm not a very oily person but just to kind of set it and lock it in place and then I'm gonna do underneath this cheekbone just to really define that sculpting that we did. And what I love about this powder is it is acne safe and SPF 20. So we are just bathing an SPF basically. And setting the eye is really a game changer. It's, it makes a big difference when it comes to doing eyeshadow as well and just really locking in that concealer. Can anybody else relate? Because I just feel like I've had such, <laughs> such a struggle to use powders and I feel like everyone uses them, but has anybody else felt this way? And if so, I think this is a really good one to try. Something about the formula is very hydrating and does not make you look dry or weird it actually looks really nice on camera next i have to do a little bit of brow gel i totally forgot this stuff this is by lawless and it's the hold up soft set creamy brow wax i feel like i don't hear many people talking about this product but i really love it and i tried the refi one and i just prefer this i feel like it's a little more natural and adds a little bit of tint Course, I've got to do a liner. This is the Wherever Walnut by Makeup Forever. Such a popular liner because Hailey Bieber uses it and it was out of stock for the longest, but it's back now. The next step is my last step and it's the one thing I've just been adding in lately that's a little bit extra for me for every day, but I'm kind of obsessed with it. And it's so nostalgic for me because these were the first eyeshadows I ever used. These are by Bare Minerals. They are so amazing. You just want to make sure you don't use very much of them. You really don't need a lot. They're so shimmery and pigmented. And... I just love the way they look on me. I feel like with a lot of shadows, again, they can really get creasy and make me look a bit older, but something about the shimmer with these, I feel like doesn't do that. And I feel like people tell you the opposite as you get older to use more matte shades, but for me, I really love, really, really love the shimmer. So this is the shade Cultured Pearl. And I am going to tap this on the lid. 
definitely not a makeup artist. I am an esthetician, but you guys do tend to ask about makeup I wear and you know I'm pretty crazy when it comes to what I will recommend. So I wanted to share, but just bear in mind my technique is questionable. I like to just get this on the inner corner. It's so, so pretty when it reflects the light. And I just do a little bit on the lid, but again, you don't need a lot. <laughs> I look back at photos of me using this in high school and just definition of how not to do eyeshadow because it was just way too much. I'm taking this powder shade and I'm gonna try to create a little transition shade with it before I lay the darker shade on top. And then I'm taking shade Queen Tiffany, just a little bit on this fluffy brush from Anastasia. I think it came with a palette that <laughs> I had for years and years, but I still love the brush. I'm just going to put this on the inner corner, kind of creating like a little baby wing and then just bringing it into the crease and then I'm just going to go back and forth. And one thing I wanted to say, because I feel like it could be overwhelming if you're struggling with acne and feeling like, oh no, do I need to like rehaul all of my makeup and throw away everything and totally start over you you can and I do think we should be going through our makeup you know every year or so getting rid of products maybe every six months but as far as a place to start I would really start with the products you use on your face that is the most important things especially when it comes to the areas that can just the easiest, which for a lot of women, it's the jawline, it's the cheeks, it's the T-zone, it's the forehead, so kind of all over except for the eyes. And that is one example and one reason you might be able to get away with, you know, using your favorite eyeshadows around the eyes. We don't normally break out around our eyes because we don't have oil glands. We're not producing much, if any, oil in that area. So I will play around more with my lips, my eyes, that kind of stuff. But when it comes to primer, bronzer, blush, foundation, concealer, those things are important. And it's important to, it's important to consider them, especially if you are applying makeup to cover acne. You want to think, okay, I'm using this concealer. I'm applying it over active acne acne that may not be fully healed or to a head yet, there might still be some infection in there. So you want to be careful as far as what you are laying over top of that. And just when it comes to the whole face, it's not only about where there's active acne. We don't know where the next breakout is going to occur. Typically it takes three months for acne to form. So my approach with acne is really preventative and cleaning out that follicle regularly, daily if you can, and ensuring what we're applying to the skin, especially as far as makeup or even hair care that can transfer to the skin, making sure it is acne safe. This is the finished look. I have been loving no mascara lately. I feel like it's really young and fresh and you can kind of play with the other areas of the face a little bit too. And I'm just really lazy when it comes to removing mascara. So no mascara for me. This is really it. And I just wanted to share because I feel like it's exciting as an acne prone person when you can find makeup that you can use and wear and still have fun with it. I feel like it's tough for a lot of people to totally abandon makeup when they are on a skincare journey and I really think we can have the best of both worlds. I hope you guys like this video. Please let me know what video you would like to see next in the comments and I will talk to you next time.